Welcome to the Pick Vault. I'm Matt Taylor alongside Danny Sivin. It's Monday, which means it's a brand new week, and Monday Night Football is here. And we have a matchup tonight between two very different teams. One team in the Tampa Bay Bucks are 5-2 and two on the season. Behind Tom Brady. Behind Leonard Fournette. Behind Gronk. Maybe one of the most talented lineups, one of the most talented rosters we've ever seen. And then all of a sudden, on the other hand, you're talking about Danny Jones. Danny Dimes, as they call him. And the New York Giants, who are 1-6 on the season. This Giants team couldn't look any worse. Is it going to switch? Is it going to turn around? We'll find out. Keep listening for today's picks, today's plays, today's score projections, and talking about what's going to happen tonight on Monday Night Football. This is the Pick Vault. Welcome to the Pick Vault. Taking sports gambling to the next level. No more winging it. It's time to get paid. We're a sports gambling consultation firm. We use sports, news, sports data, stats, and analytics. And we help you unlock your money. Get ready to start winning. This is the Pick Vault. And here's Matt Taylor and Danny Siv. It's the Pick Vault. Gonna sit you down and listen to this real talk. Ain't no first or second option, it's the default. Turning picks into these dollars, gonna let them fall. Raining down these daily winnings like an aerosol. Analytics calculated just to win it all. Problems when it comes to choosing, we got all them solved. Got the picks that need and fixed, and you know who to call. Cause this the, cause this the, cause and this he is the right, that's J Live official. Go check him out on Apple Music, Spotify, or right here on Instagram at J Live underscore official now again welcome to the big fall we're happy you are here and again we have one of the most interesting matchups on monday night football that we've had all season long and again we're going to break it down right now for you guys and then end the game and the end the show by giving you guys today's picks plays and score projections so dan let's hop right into it let's talk about tonight's game on uh on espn at 8 15 p.m between the Tampa Bay bucks and the new york giants my and, guys matt and, and let's, my guys and let's hear some of these injuries before we break down everything else uh, you know regarding the game let's break down some of these injuries and what's going on for both these teams well matt what else is new nothing good going for the giants per usual as we have ryan lewis the cornerback out Devonte freeman who was our backup running back after saquon was out he's out with an ankle injury and then adrian colbert safety he's also out and matt i think one of the biggest game changers of this whole entire monday night football game will hernandez left guard for the giants out unfortunately with COVID. Hopefully he does get better. But that O-line just got that much worse for obviously Danny Dimes. And for the Bucks, we have A B obviously not playing, but he will be activated next week. And then Chris Godwin is out with a broken finger. But don't worry, he still has Mike Evans. He still has Scotty Miller. You still have Gronk. You have plenty of boys on this Tampa Bay team that Godwin being out isn't much of a loss. Absolutely. And again, you're talking about a team in this Tampa Bay Buccaneers that has the greatest quarterback of all time in Tom Brady and also has, again, maybe the greatest weapons that any team has ever assembled in one organization at one time. It's a fantasy football team over there in Tampa Bay. So, Dan, let's talk and break down the impact, before we really dive into this game specifically, let's talk about the impact and what Antonio Brown, the addition of Antonio Brown does for this team. Because again, the rich just keep getting richer. And now they go out, they get Antonio Brown, maybe one of the greatest receivers of all time, joining up with Mike Evans, who's one of the dominant receivers in the league today. Obviously, like we said, Gronkowski, Leonard Fournette, and a bunch of these weapons. What does Antonio Brown do for Tom Brady? What does Antonio Brown do for this team And what does Antonio Brown do for the city of Tampa Bay? Well, I think everyone's going to look at Antonio Brown. He's had a bad pass, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, guys, Antonio Brown is and will be one of the best wide receivers in the league. He won't skip a beat. They've even said it. He's living at Tom Brady's house right now. They're going over the playbook. This team is getting scarier and scarier. And one of the biggest things that this Tampa Bay Bucs team and Bruce Arians is probably worried about, and he kind of came out and said it right when AB got there, If you're going to complain about how many times you're targeted or how many times you get touchdown passes thrown to you, this team, Matt, like you said, is loaded with Antonio Brown on this team. I think they have three wide receiver ones right now, which is ridiculous. This team is becoming a cheat code. So, yes, Antonio Brown is going to make this team better like you would make anyone better. Absolutely. And I'm going to take it a step further. I believe the addition of Antonio Brown and I had you know going into this season, I talked about how I believe the NFC was going to be between the Packers and the Seahawks. I said that from the start. I said, ah, Tom Brady going to the Bucks. Okay, it'll take two years, 
and he'll end his career by winning a Super Bowl next year. I was wrong. This edition of Antonio Browns totally surpasses anything we've ever seen in the league. Again, you're getting one of the greatest run, uh, wide receivers in the history of the NFL to join the team midseason, have been rested up now, and he has a lot to prove. You know, people don't want to talk about the fact that Antonio Brown has a lot to prove, not only to the people in Tampa Bay, not only to Tom Brady, because he kind of let him down in, in New England last year after you know getting suspended. But all of a sudden, he has a lot to prove to himself and a lot to prove to every single team and organization that surpassed on him over the past four or five years. Yeah. Uh, and all, you know, leaving uh, the Raiders, leaving uh, the situation e- even in New England, leaving the situation in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. where it all started. Really. Um, so all of a sudden, you're talking about a player that has a lot to prove. And with the talent that he has, and again, the talent of Tom Brady and the fact that Tom Brady is taking him under his wing, Tom Brady was quoted this morning saying, I take full responsibility and accountability for Antonio Brown. Well, right, because Bruce Arians, prior in the season, when the whole talk about Antonio Brown coming back to the league, is he a fit? Are you going to pair him up with Tom Brady? And Arians was pretty much an advocate saying, he's not going to work in this system. I don't see it working. So you go eight weeks. Looks like Tom Brady's got a little bit of a hold there on Bruce Arians, man. I would say, like you said, Again, he's you, running the show over there. You're talking about a quarterback in Tom Brady who's the greatest player to ever play the, you know, put on the pads and play football. Yeah. Um, and that's just the truth. So, yes, he has power. And, yes, he does have a weird connection, in my opinion, with, with Antonio Brown. I think, I, we're gonna see so. it. I think we're going to see it on the field play out extraordinarily well. I believe the addition of Antonio Brown not only makes this team Super Bowl contenders, I'm going to go on the record right now, and I'm going to give you guys two bold predictions right now. I believe this team – does not lose the remainder of the year. Wow. I think this team goes undefeated into the playoffs, does not lose one game in the playoffs, wins a Super Bowl, and Tom Brady gets MVP this season I mean, and gets Super Bowl MVP. I mean, hey, listen, I'm not going to, I won't be the one to say that's not going to happen because I'll be the first one to say in the beginning of the season, I said Tampa Bay doesn't have it. They're not going to do anything. Not that Brady's washed up. I just didn't think the Bucs as an organization really had what it takes to bring it to that next level, Matt, like you're talking about, that Super Bowl caliber team, but adding an Antonio Brown, having Brady, I mean, bringing Gronk to the team, you're just making a winning culture by adding those guys to your team. They've been there. They've experienced it. That's going to go such a long way in the playoffs, Matt. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they get there. And if anyone didn't know this, the Super Bowl is in Tampa Bay this year. So I don't know if that's a little ironic. It could be be the first ever team to play in the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And, and, And again, if that's the case, you're talking about the first ever team to win a Super Bowl in their home stadium, yeah, I mean, which could be very exciting, especially in Tampa Bay, where they do allow fans. And hopefully by that time, when it is Super Bowl time and, and we are in February um, or, or the end of January, February, we have to be talking about maybe having a full stadium or a fuller stadium. I would hope so. Um, and that's, again, obviously my goal. And, and, and again, I have nothing to say about that, but I hope we do see fans in the stands during a Tom Brady win in Tampa Bay. But But again... Now let's shift the focus from Tom Brady, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and talk about everything that's going on with this New York Giants team. Now we have to start by saying, again, they're kind of paralleled in, in a negative way because everything that could go right for this Buccaneers team has gone right, and everything that could go wrong for this Giants team has kind of gone wrong. You're talking about a team that's 1-6. and six. You're talking about a team that had, again, unrealistic expectations on their team this season. Everyone, again, New York Giants fans and New York fans in general kind of put these expectations on their teams to be so successful, uberly successful. And again, you can only not live up to those expectations, whether it's the New York Yankees, whether it's the Mets, whether it's the Knicks, whether it's the, the Jets, Nets, the whether Giants, it's, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, and now all of a sudden they're one and six at this point in the season. They're without their star running back, their guy, Saquon Barkley, who came out of Penn State as one of those players that people really noticed and said, this guy could be something special. This guy could be one of the greatest running backs to ever play the game. And all of a sudden, we've now seen two consecutive years with two consecutive major, major injuries. I don't know if a guy like this ever comes back the exact same. And that has to be worrisome for this New York Giants organization. So again, you're one in six on the year. As a Giants fan, Dan, because I know you were you know, yeah. a big Giants fan, I'm going to give you a moment to talk about the state of your organization. Again, remember, right? The president of the United States has a moment every time the state of the union to kind of talk about, you know, what's going on in the country. I'm giving you the state of the New York Giants. Danny, let's hear what's up. All right. The state of the New York Giants right now could be that we are in the midst of a dumpster fire, I would say, for the most part. And everyone's going to go turn their heads on Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, he doesn't deserve the name Danny Dimes. 
But Matt, he's got nothing to work with. This Giants team is depleted of their offensive line. We haven't had an offensive line. I can't tell you since when. That was the only reason Saquon even really did anything because our offensive line was capable of blocking for him. Like you said, he had that one stellar first year, two injuries after that. And now we got a Giants team going to play a Bucks team. And you know what kills me about the Giants, Matt? A lot of teams come off buys. The Giants team, by the way, hasn't played till, since last Thursday against an Eagles team. Again, another dumpster fire organization. They lost that one 22 to 21. So it was a close game. But you think the Giants should be well rested, hopefully prepared. But of course, we have to go up against Tom Brady. Thank God that Antonio Brown isn't in the lineup, or I'd be even more scared. See, that, that's where uh, I'm going to cut you off because you got to talk about everything this Giants defense has done, right? You got to talk about everything this Giants defense, how poor they've played all season long. Antonio Brown on the field or not, this team in the, in the Buccaneers has weapons that are going to totally exploit this defense. Let's talk about what they've done, defensively speaking, this Giants team on the season. They open up the season against Pittsburgh, and they give them 26 points. Then they play Chicago, who has no quarterback. At the time, it was Mitch Trubisky. It was Mitch. No quarterback, 17 points. Then they go play the 49ers, give up almost 40 points, 36 points to Jimmy Garoppolo's uh, 49ers. And then all of a sudden, against the Rams, 17, the Cowboys, 37. That's, that's got to be a question <laughs> yeah, mark. That is bad. Especially without Dak in that game. Um, and then all of a sudden, going down 19 points, 22 points against the Bucks uh, last time. And all of a sudden... Um, they're, they're, I'm sorry, against the Eagles uh, last week, they gave up 22 points. And now today they're going up against the Bucks team that, again, averages the second most points in the NFL. Yeah, well, right. It's definitely worrisome. But the problem I have is that I knew this defense wasn't really going to be anything. And if anything, we added some additions. And again, injuries come to haunt you. And our defense isn't capable of being that defense that could lock a game down. But my issue, Matt, is even if our defense played half decent and maybe only gave up, like you said, 10 points, 17 points, our offense does not have the firepower to put up more points. Like you just said, the Bucks averaged 28 plus points a game. Last week, speaking Bucks defensively, they only gave up 10 points to Aaron Rodgers. So they held, in my opinion, an MVP caliber quarterback. I can only imagine what they are going to do to Daniel Jones and that offense tonight because we have no offense. That's my issue. Even if we had a defense, our offense has nothing to compare it to. We can't score points, Matt. We can't, and I don't see it happening tonight. I agree. I, I think you guys struggle to score points, and I think that goes back to the overarching problem, which is, again, not having an offensive line, not having your star running back, not having weapons on, on the outside for Danny Jones, and, and that's got to be the conversation. Again, I believe one of the biggest problems with New York organizations, and, and really, I, I'll even single out the Giants as, as, as the yeah, only one fine. that we're talking about today, they put these expectations on these players. Again, I said, when, when Saquon came out of... Um, College, he was advertised as being the greatest running back to ever come out of college. At least he did it for a year, though. He did it for a year, and he did show that he had glimpses and he had the potential to do that on a long scale. And everyone in New York got, what, excited? Of course. But Danny, Danny Jones really wasn't the quarterback at that time. That was still in the Eli Manning, end of the Eli Manning days. And all of a sudden now, you said Danny Jones was going to be you know trained by Eli, get that mentorship, and all of a sudden he takes over. And what happens to Saquon? He gets injured. Then what happens to Saquon again this season? He gets injured once again. The problem that I have with this Giants team is you got to stop putting expectations. And again, you can't you can't blame the injuries. Um, no one can can expect yeah, an course. injury. And again, uh, it's unfair for me to even uh, relate that. But all I'm saying is, with this Giants organization, they continuously put unrealistic expectations on a quarterback. How could you expect him? As a Giants fan, and you do, yeah. you do, because we, you know, Dan and I live together, and we talk all the time. Dan gets pissed off when Danny Jones doesn't perform, or Danny Jones doesn't perform at the highest level of his, of his game. And all I'm saying is, New York Giants fans out there continuously put this expectation on him to do great and extraordinary things. Look at the weapons he has. No. If you were to tear, take anyone in the league right now, and again, I, I'll take out the Patrick Mahomes of the world. Yeah. I'll take out the Aaron Rodgers, the the um, Russell Brady, Wilson, yeah, the top, the, the, the Aaron yes, Rodgers. Absolutely. If you take out that upper um, tier of quarterbacks, and all of a sudden you say, okay, who could come in right now and do better? I don't know if you have an answer, and that's coming from me, a guy that really doesn't believe that Danny Jones is the answer. answer. Right, I don't think he is, to be honest, either. But like you just said, how can you really get a fair, you know, assessment on it? It's kind of like the same thing with Darnold. How can you get a fair as assessment on these guys when they're in a culture? That let alone isn't a winning culture, but these guys can't do anything, Matt. I feel bad for these guys. Like you said, Daniel Jones, he comes into this team and he tries to turn it around 
and you lose Saquon Barkley. And like you were saying, yeah, he's our best running back, best player on the field. Daniel Jones used him, throw, used to throw the ball to him. He used to use Saquon in so many different aspects. Saquon would bail him out. We have no one to bail him out. Now, if anything, I'm afraid every every game I even say to you, he's going to get hurt. We have no O-line. There's nothing you could do. Without Devontae Freeman in the game today, I don't know. I mean, we have Wayne Gallman. He'll get some reps, which is fine. But he's no Saquon. Let alone, he's not a Devontae Freeman. It's it's going to be a nightmare tonight, Matt. And like you said, we have no weapons. We have Slayton. Engram, if he decides to play, and he always is hurt. So I don't know what the deal with him is either. But Slayton's our wide receiver one. And in my opinion, anywhere else, he's a wide receiver two. So like you said, we have nothing going for us whatsoever. Absolutely. And again, I think it's interesting that this game is being played the day after the Chiefs annihilate and demolish the Jets, right? It's just kind of an overlapping. In my opinion, you're talking about two teams that are so... Uh, you know, unbalanced, yeah. and, and, and it's so extraordinary to see the difference in talent, in culture, in perspective in these two organizations. And again, it kind of highlights what's going on in the NFL today, and especially highlights what's going on at week eight, because we are at the midway point for the season. And again, one team here in the in the Buccaneers is looking to make that progression upwards and make that progression to get to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. And all of a sudden, the other team. In my opinion, it's almost time to say, hey, this season's over. But but again, it's not. I that's know. what's scary about this Giants team. And that's why I think the NFC East and the teams that are in the NFC East this season are unlucky. Um, and, and people are going to be like, wait, what? This year, the NFC East is so open and so poor that a team could get in with four, five, five wins. Yeah. You, can, you, you can make the playoffs with five wins. So this Giants team... As much as it's time, really, where they should be talking about tanking and talking about next season, talking about what they're going to do to yeah. improve next year, like race they first. can't do that yet because they are still right in the thick of it. And if they win today, all of a sudden, you're a game out of first place. Which is crazy. Against an Eagles team like we saw last night, Matt, that isn't that great either. So I do agree with you. Talk about well, the whole NFC East is just in all aspects depleted. And hopefully we don't see that tonight, but I don't, I can't see it going well for us tonight whatsoever, Matt. Absolutely. All right, so now let's talk about specifics, right? Now we're gonna dive in and give you guys the artificial intelligence back computer simulated uh, results and outcomes of this game and a score projection as well. So Dan, hop in and give us what the, before you do actually, yeah. um, the spread for the game, and I'll announce this, the spread for the game is 12 and a half points. Uh, the Bucks are giving 12 and a half points, which means the Giants will be getting 12 and a half points. And the money line for the Buccaneers is minus 670, and the money line for the Giants is plus 510. So, again, is there value in money line? And, and I'm going to be honest with you. This is the first game. This is the first game of the year that I would say to you there is value in a minus 670 money line against this Giants team. Again, you're talking about just the utter disrespect that they're even offering. They're even offering uh, uh, a, top, money line, you know, yeah. a money line at all. It's, it's disrespectful to Tom Brady. It's disrespectful to this Bucks organization. And frankly, it's disrespectful to the New York Giants because you got to talk about, again, that goes back to the unrealistic expectations that are put on this Giants team. How is it 670? I understand that's a big, a, a right, large yeah. chunk of money. And again, there's, there's the value isn't great. But the fact that there even is a money line is concerning in itself. I don't know. I think tonight you're talking about a big blowout. I think, again, you're talking about two teams that are totally unmatched and totally unequal that again you're talking about the best quarterback to ever play the game and the weapons that he has against a terrible defense a terrible quarterback and a terrible system with no weapons it's just two totally different organizations and two to hey, hey, right now i don't even and this is going to sound bad i don't even know if this giants team is capable of competing in the nfc east no um, not. And, and, and i said to you right now they can't give up because they're only a game out of first place or two games out of first place but i don't even know if they compete against the weak disabled, dis, dismantled, uh, you know, NFC East right now, and all of a sudden you're going against probably the best team in all of football right now. Yeah, let alone the best, you're playing against the best quarterback in the world right now. And Matt, I'll be honest with you, the pick vault projection computer simulator is on the same exact path that you're on. We have the Bucks here winning 31 to a Giants 17. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's even putting a little respect on the Giants there that we're capable of putting up 17 points. I hope that is the case. But based off that spread, we do have the Bucks covering that minus 12 and a half. And for anyone that didn't know this, this line, Matt, started at nine and a half. So if you bet this game days ago, I mean, you were onto something. I mean, I wish we knew that because I would have been all over this 10 days ago when the line was at nine. So early bettors obviously hopped on it early and drove it up to 12 and a half. 
But the Bucs are going to win this one pretty handedly. Absolutely. I couldn't agree anymore. Again, I think this is definitely at least a two-touchdown ball game. So the pick vault is on the same page as, as I am, at least. Uh, and I know that you are as well, even as a Giants fan. This is at least a two-touchdown game. Um, and we're talking about just a, a, a moment in history where, again, I think it's it's the, the computer simulator is even being generous, like you said. They say that they're going to put up 17 points because look what they've scored this, year, this season. Yes, against a terrible... Um, Cowboys team, they put up 34 points. Yes, that's impressive. It's somewhat. Kind of, not really. But but let, let, let's look against some of the better competition in the league. Against the Steelers, who have a great defense. They're talking about 16 points. Um, against the Bears, is are a great defense, 13 points. Um, against the 49ers, which is a decent defense at this point. At, at that point in the season, they had Joey Bosa. They had their, their, their strongest. Yeah, their core. Their defense, 9 points. The Rams, great defense. Aaron Donald, everything there, 9 points. This team in the New York Giants, offensively speaking, and some of those games, they even had Saquon Barkley on the field. So you're talking about just an utter team that can't put up points and a defense that can't stop anyone. This is going to be a dismantle, uh, a dismantleization of this Giants organization. I think after this game today, the conversation needs to shift within the Giants organization, and they really need to talk about making a lot of changes. And I think that starts with Gettleman. I think he's been a problem. He was a problem in North in Carolina. Again, coming from a Carolina Panthers fan, Gettleman took a 15 and one team that made a Super Bowl run. They went undefeated in the playoffs and and make it to the Super Bowl, and they lose to a, a Bron- Broncos team. They were talented. Matt, they takes, absolutely could have won that same, Super Bowl. Takes that same team and completely dismantles it. Trades away uh, Norman. Trades away uh, all of our weapons. And trades away Smith, uh, Steve Smith. I mean, some of the things that Gettleman did in that in that organization, it was just uh, terrible. So you're saying that that trend is starting with the Giants now. So Matt, I'm with you because that is one thing that you always warned me about when we were in the hiring process. You're like, you do not want Gettleman. You do not want Gettleman. And of course, what do the Giants do? They go out and get Gettleman. And another thing, Matt, this Giants team tonight, if they don't show up, which I don't think they will, like you said. Is there rumors around, is Daniel Jones the answer? I know we always talk about, is it the team around him? But is it time for, you know, thinking about change in that Giants, you know, behind center really being the quarterback and Daniel Jones? Is he our answer? See, I, I, I that's a real question. Um, and it's a fair question to ask. And I think that's one thing that people are going to have to really look into. Because, again, you haven't given him a full opportunity to be successful. He came in the league and the year that he really should have started was that first year he came in. Eli Manning was uh, on the back end of his career. Eli Manning was not putting up the same numbers. And, frankly, if you were going to go out and get a Danny Jones and you were going to get a quarterback – in the first round, if we're going to do that, you have to fully commit. And I think right now they need some. Uh, they need to do something and you hire someone that fully commits to the future of the organization. Because frankly, keeping Eli Manning around, as much as it helped him, maybe it helped. Uh, uh, we're talking about Danny Jones. It helped Danny Jones maybe in a mentorship role. But all of a sudden, again, Eli Manning took that Giants team and, and they didn't go anywhere. No. They didn't do anything. They didn't accomplish any of their goals. And what happens? Then all of a sudden, the next season, they come back with unrealistic expectations. And wait a second, they don't have Odo Beckham Jr. And wait a second, Saquon Barkley gets injured. And wait a second, again, you're talking about a guy that's never really had a full opportunity. And I do think Danny Jones shows moments of, of, yeah. of he reminds me, and I'm going to say, he reminds me a lot of Nick Foles. Uh, I think he would be a very good backup quarterback that has the talent, has the skill to win games if in the right circumstances. Yeah. Again, we saw Nick Foles do it in that Super Bowl run. He won games in the right circumstances against the right teams at the right moment with the with the right weapons. And I think Danny Jones is very similar. I don't know if he's a starting quarterback. I don't know if he's a starting quarterback of the New York Giants. No. Um, and I don't know if he's skilled enough to completely change an organization around. That's the problem. That's the question right now. The Giants are in a situation where if they aren't keeping Danny Jones, if they aren't keeping Danny Jones, that decision has to be made now. Yeah. Because I- you could trade him away get value for him now, and then go out and get a guy in the draft like a Trevor Lawrence, potentially, right? You, you, you're that bad where you have a chance for that spot, at least. I mean, you're only going to compete with, like, the Jets, maybe. Well, I was going to say, the sad part is, out of all seasons, I mean, it's going to be a race to number one. There's a lot of bad teams in the league, let alone the Jets, who probably will go 0-16, so I think they will get that number one pick. So you're talking about a, a decision that needs to be made now, and that's what I'm telling you. I think the NF- NFC East and the teams within the NFC East are really unlucky this season because – they're always going to be a one, you know, one game out or two games out of first place, just because how bad all the teams are. That you can't really make that full commitment to the next season. Again, I think the teams that that that, that end up 
being able to bounce back are teams that are fully committed to just saying, let's do it. Yeah, don't um, be afraid. Rip the let, Band-Aid let, off. Yeah, exactly. And I think right now is that time. I think if I was in charge, and I'm not, if I was in charge of this New York Giants organization, I would take Danny Jones and I would go get value for him. And I'd get value in the draft. Because right now, you need to go out there, and if you can get a guy like Trevor Lawrence, or you can get a guy that has the skill and has the, the wherewithal to be a starting quarterback that you believe that you can trust in, you have to now get the value in Danny Jones because there's teams like the Cowboys that have weapons. Oh. And then, I know you're never really going to trade into inner division. I'm not right. No, I know. But, yeah, I know you're but not again, saying there, there, there's, there's openings right now for teams that are in the hunt still because guess what? This Cowboys organization... If you were to put Danny Jones in that situation or take Danny Jones and put him into that organization with those weapons, that could be the situation that works. I mean, I honestly, I hope that isn't the case. And like you said, they probably it wouldn't happen. But I definitely agree with you. It's something that needs to happen. And I think everyone's going to start taking notice because you see all these teams in the league, Matt, that are ripping the Band-Aid off. In L.A., they had Tyrod Taylor. Unfortunately, he got hurt. What do you do? You start Justin Herbert, and the kid is thrown for over 300 yards in every start he has. And then you look in Cincinnati. They rip the Band-Aid off. You start Joe Burrow. Talk about someone that really ripped the Band-Aid off. See, Fitzpatrick. That, that, when I'm talking about ripping the Band-Aid off, I'm talking about making an, uh, an intentional decision right now at this moment and going and making a move that people that, that aren't, isn't going to be popular. Again, Playing Joe Burrow is a popular decision. A coach is going to get praised by all the fans in Cincinnati because all of a sudden that's what they wanted. They want to see their guy, right? Um, same thing in L.A. You just brought up L.A. And the fact that, again, they're starting Herbert. And, and, and really, he didn't even have the decision-making. All of a sudden, um, Tyrod Taylor gets injured. That's what made that decision for him. So, again, that, that's not a committed decision. I'm talking about a team that semi in the hunt in the New York Giants, in the NFC East because of how bad the division no, is, say it's- <laughs> making an intentional decision to say, eh, this isn't our year. We got the coach we want. Again, I don't know if he was the right answer, but you got the coach you wanted. They think um, it's the right answer. You then went out and you built around him. You you you, you go and get um back Jason, to, you get Jason Garrett. I mean, he's offensive coordinator. Again, back to your Cowboys decision. Imagine Daniel Jones in that Cowboys in organization, and maybe the Cowboys are missing Garrett a little bit. To be honest with you, but not that he's done anything for us. All, all I'm saying is, I want to see an organization, whether it's the New York Jets, whether it's the New York Giants, whoever it is. I want to see an organization that's willing to. Blow it up. I, and I really think there's an opportunity for a lot of these teams. Uh, for instance, the Atlanta Falcons. They're not winning the, the NFC South. No. It's not happening. They're not even going to make a playoff run because guess what? They have the Saints in that division. They have the Buccaneers in that division. And they have the Panthers. And they play all three of those teams one more time. And all three of those teams are competing and higher at a higher level than they are right now. 100%. Um, especially as you talk about records and, and where they stand currently in that division. That team has weapons like a Julio Jones, like a Matt Ryan. You that, get so much value. That you really can go it. out and trade for. 100%. Get the value in the front end because all of a sudden you lose a lot of your leverage in a negotiation as soon as the season's over. Because right now, there's teams that need a starting quarterback. For instance, I keep going back to it, but the Dallas Cowboys, there's a need right now. Absolutely. And if I was an NFL executive or if I was a general manager for an NFL team, and I had Matt Ryan in my organization, and I'm in Atlanta, or I had Danny Jones in my organization, and I'm in New York, or I had Sam Darnold in my organization, and I'm the New York Jets, I'm saying, hold on a second. Let's get a little bit of value for what we have. Because Sam Darnold, the experiment, the, the, the experiment didn't work. Yeah. Let's no, be honest. Did. The experiment did failed. not work with Sam Darnold. Everyone no. thought one thing about him, and we've seen it year in and year out. There are just people that just are kind of, they get labeled busts in this league, but... But it goes back to the overarching problem of finally making the decision to blow it all up. Yeah, it's yeah. a very difficult decision because you're talking about billion-dollar organizations making decisions that impacts fan bases, impacts the bottom line, impacts jersey sales, impacts everything. And I'm not blind to that. But I want to see an organization that's willing, and I think there's a few out there right now that are on the fringe, like the Falcons, like the Giants, like the Jets, that know this is not their year. Yeah. And we need to make that decision now because well, the, guess what? This Jets organization, this Jets team could win every game the remainder of the year and they they most likely would not make the playoffs because they're 0-8. They can go 8-8 and they probably won't make the playoffs in that division. Let's be honest. Yeah, the Giants are still in it and that's what I'm telling you. That is the problem in the NFCs right now. The Giants, it's too early for them to, to blow up their organization mm-hmm. because they still have the talent today even with how bad their team is. And yes, they are going to improve to 1-7 and, and they are in a really bad situation after they lose oh. today. But... Two wins back to back, and you go three and seven. All of a sudden, 
you may be at the helm of that division. Yeah, but that's ridiculous that you're even stating that fact because I completely agree with you. I think it is time. I don't know if it's time for the Giants to blow it up. Maybe we'll find out tonight, though, Matt, to be honest with you. If things go that poorly tonight, kind of like yesterday, how things went that poorly for the Jets playing against the Chiefs, I think blowing it up wouldn't be a bad thing. I don't want to say I'd be upset about it. I think that the biggest problem with the New York organization's They're afraid to give people away because of what they might do somewhere else. And I understand that. But unfortunately, if it's not working where you are, you got to just say, you know what? It didn't work out. I was wrong. And just accept it. That's the biggest thing. Like you always say, the New York mindset, they don't want to accept the fact that they just don't have it. And and you and I have talked about this previously, and I'll say it on air. Talking about the Jets, because the Jets are in New York. The Jets have, uh, again, uh, issues with blowing up their organization. That's a team. That doesn't have leadership whatsoever. No, nothing. They go out and they make an intentional move and pay somebody in Le'Veon Bell a ridiculous amount of money that no one else was willing to pay him. That's the only reason. I mean, he signed with the Jets because they were willing to pay him a ridiculous amount of money. And all of a sudden, he comes into the organization, fails. You're fine releasing him. Releasing him and paying him the remainder of the year to play for the Chiefs, who's going to maybe be in the Super Bowl yeah, against Tom said, Brady. So, so, places. so, so there's you, you said some of these New York organizations are scared to, to give up a player. The Jets aren't right now. That's what doesn't make sense to me about keeping Sam Darnold right now. The talk of the town is in, in New York and everywhere is there's a guy in Trevor Lawrence that can come into the organization wherever he ends up and completely change the organization. They're saying that he may be the greatest and most complete talent to ever come in the league at quarterback. That we've ever seen, and they keep comparing it back to Peyton Manning and things that have come in the league uh, since uh, you know that, that that moment. But all of a sudden, they let go of Le'Veon Bell, and so that is the first team that I'm starting to see make an intentional decision to blow up the organization and say, "Hold on, I believe the next step for this team, the next step for the Jets." If you want my honest opinion, yeah, the I next exactly step where you're going. is to get rid of Sam Darnold, trade him away to the Cowboys now in the middle of the season, give them value, right? Get get something in return. You have to because, get something, yeah. Because you know for a fact if the Jets are at the end of the at the end of the season, if the Jets are 0 and 16, 1 and 15, 2 and 14, whatever it ends up being, and they are at the front runner to get that number one pick, and they get the number one pick in the draft, they're gonna have to get. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Absolutely, no doubt. And so there's no reason to hold on to um, Sam Darnold now. And, and I've heard the argument from some you know, Jets fans out there that say, eh, just keep him for the uh, remainder of the year, see what he's capable of doing, and see, uh, you know, build his value for next season. That argument is asinine, in my opinion, because you know what happens here? If he happened to play well, and if he was going to build his value – your team isn't going to have the number one pick because the only way he builds his value and gets better trade value than you have for him right now is if he plays better than he has been playing currently. Right, and That's I, the only way he could build his value upward. Yeah, and the other scary part is, think about it the other way around. Imagine if you go throughout this whole season, obviously you have a depleted team all around. If Sam Darnold gets hurt for some reason, I'm not wishing it on him. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Yeah. But injuries happen all the time, Matt. And oh, that could be another mistake that the Jets make. And who knows? Darnold gets hurt. Like you said, I don't really know if there's any value for him now. That's my big overarching thing. I don't think there's value for him now. I don't think there's going to be value for him down the road. If the, I'm, But the, the, the moment that you can get value for him is right now. And the reason is that nothing to do with Sam Darnold. The reason there's value in Sam Darnold today has nothing to do with how well or how negative Sam Darnold has played. It's because there's a team that has an extraordinary amount of weapons. Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Amari Cooper. C.D. Lamb, C.D. Gallup. Lamb. I mean, you're go, loaded. Go down the list. Has an extraordinary amount of weapons with no quarterback. And that's not their fault, right? Their no. quarterback goes down with an injury. And their backup co- quarterback totally. goes down with an injury. All of a sudden, you're with the third string quarterback. There's value. Right now, if you're a Cowboys fan, and Sam Darnold, because Sam Darnold has never had the weapons, um, total weapons, to be successful, especially from the offensive line. Some of these teams need to realize you need to build the offensive line. Talking about, again, the Jets, they made an intentional decision to let go of Robbie Anderson, a wide receiver, wide receiver one, to let go of Le'Veon Bell, a, a, a running back one. But that stems right back to what you just said with the offensive line. It's almost like, why would you get Le'Veon Bell knowing you didn't have an offensive line? It was kind of like you were just throwing your hook out there and hoping you catch a reel of some sort of fish. And yeah, you got Le'Veon Bell, but you have nothing in front of you to protect him. Le'Veon Bell, Matt, we saw it in, in the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. He's a shifty guy. He would get around his blockers. 
Well, in the Jets organization, you have no blockers. He was blown up in the backfield, and it got to a point where he was just a headache. He didn't want to be out there. So, honestly, I'm not saying you have to let him walk. I do think they should have got something for him. But you kind of just have to let them do what they want to do between him, see, Jamal see, Adams. The same, the same Jets fans that praised the move to let go of Le'Veon Bell are the same Jets fans that are saying you should keep Sam Darnold. Does not make any sense to me whatsoever. And that's not me, you know, picking on Jets fans. It makes no sense. You had the guy. <laughs> you had your guy. You had your moment. You had your Sam Darnold. You had your Le'Veon Bell. You had your Robbie Anderson. You had them all on the field together. Didn't work. It didn't work. So now it's time to blow up that organization. Again, I know we're a little bit off subject, but again, we're talking about how teams need to make the decisions middle of the year. Because if you wait till the offseason and you start building then, what happens? We know at the end of this season what? We know at the end of this season that Sam Darnold most likely will not be the starting quarterback for the New York Jets yeah. next season. We also know that Gates, Gase will not be the coach Jets, yeah, for the Jets next not. season as well. So if you know that and you know a new system is coming in and you know that you could probably get a little bit, a little bit of value, whether it's even minuscule, yeah, even a anything, little bit of value a pick, a for Sam Darnold now, something. I don't understand why you wouldn't do it. Right. No, I'm I'm honestly 100% with you. And like I was, I'm a big advocate on the whole firing the coach thing. I think the fact that Gase is still in this organization, like you said, Matt, what are you waiting for? I mean, don't you want to start rebuilding somewhat? Maybe get, again, we're going at Sam Donald hard. He has had three different playbooks in the past three years. So again, there is nothing to build off of. The time is over in New York. And again, I know we're off subject with the whole Giants, but it goes back to the same thing. This New York mindset and organization it's a, it's a problem all around, and something and, needs to be and, done. And the problem becomes the New York fans. And I hate to say it because I'm a Yankees fan, obviously, um, and you're talking about the New York fans put this expect, expectation, right? And we've talked about it previously. We've talked about it over and over, and it goes back to the Giants. It goes back to the Jets. It goes back to all the organizations that we've touched on. But it eliminates the opportunity for the Jets for the Giants to ever be long-term successful because they never could rebuild fully because there's an expectation to win today. There's an expectation for the Giants on the field to win today. There's an expectation by Giants fan to win today. Yeah, there's, a, there's an expectation from Giants fans on Sam, uh, not Sam Darnold, on, on, Daniel on, Jones, yeah. on Daniel Jones to be successful tonight, which is unfair. If they were willing, uh, Jets fans, Giants fans, Knicks fans. Again, Knicks, Knicks are a perfect example, right? They go out there and they make subtle moves Right, subtle moves to get just enough talent on the court to let people watch the Knicks. Just enough talent to get some fans to come to the games. Just enough talent. They're never willing to just say, "Okay, we suck." I mean, that, that that's what it comes down to. Yeah, These New York organizations, the Giants. They suck. Yeah. Let's be, I, I, I'm going to speak. First I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak truth for a second to some of these New York fans out there. The Giants, they suck. The Jets, they suck. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. It's time to allow your organization to suck. Because what's worse, sucking this year and not winning a game all season, Jets fans, or winning three games, Giants fans, this season, Doesn't and all of a sudden allowing your team to be decent next year. Yeah. You're not going to be great. Again, when, when Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback for the New York Jets next season, right? When Trevor Lawrence takes over and wears a Jets uh, uniform next season, the problem is there's an expectation that's going to be put on this man that no quarterback has ever had. Yeah, and that absolutely. is the same expectation they put on Sam Darnold, the same expectation that people put on Eli Manning, the same expectation that people put on Danny John. And, Danny Jones. And, and the other thing, Matt, they might even, like you were saying before, they're looking at this kid as the best prospect since Peyton Manning. They might blow this kid up itself. There's going to be so much expectation on him to be great and to turn this organization around. But like we've said, right now, they don't have what it takes to turn the organization around. Yes, a quarterback is the biggest game changer. But if you don't have a defense, if you don't have a coach, there's so many other aspects than just getting the best quarterback in the league. It doesn't matter. Um, if you took Tom Brady right now, Matt, and put him on the Jets, I'm not saying the Jets are going to be as bad, but there's no way in hell that the Jets are going to be competing in the AFC still. I just can't see it. Again, the expectations in these organizations is a problem. And I'm the problem because, again, like you said, when Daniel Jones came to the Giants, I was like, he's our guy. I'd rather him than Haskins. It's fine. But again, like you said, they didn't really start him off the way he should have. And that's when I was kind of commenting back with the Herberts and the Tua's and the Joe Burrows. 
It's over. It's done. Well, you, that's what I'm telling you. You want the, the problem with this Giants team, and again, we're going to get back to the Giants and then close this episode out again one, one more time, giving you guys the score projection, which is 31-17, and also the picks and plays for this game uh, tonight between the, the Buccaneers and the Giants. But the problem with the Giants right now is they have to be willing, and the problem they made and the, and the, and the poor decision they made in keeping Eli Manning a little bit too long one thing that you have to notice, and I've pointed out many times on this show um, over and over, one thing you have to really respect about Bill Belichick and the Patriots is he has an innate ability to get rid of players right before, right before their downfall. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it. The Giants are polar opposites. They kept Eli Manning and they held on to him and kind of wrung out every last bit of Absolutely. of any moment of, of greatness that that man had in him. And they weren't willing to build the offensive line. They weren't willing to really build the defense the way that they had previously. Yeah, uh, under won a Super Bowl. Uh, under, under Coughlin, right? Defenses win, wins championships. And we're kind of in a new era where people forget how important defense is. And we're seeing firsthand this season – that defense is important. Look at the best defenses in the league: the Buccaneers, the Steelers, um, and, and you go the down the list. Up there too. The Ravens. Yeah, you're talking about teams that just are at the the top of the league because of their defense, and that kind of helps their offense. And I don't use the Steelers as the perfect example. Their offense is nothing special this year. No. Really, it really isn't something special. Ben Roethlisberger is still a great quarterback in this league. Ben Roethlisberger is still talented, but the weapons around him are good. Don't get me wrong. The weapons around him are good. I mean, James Conner is great. Junior's uh, all right. You're talking I mean, about play. they have good weapons, but the heart and soul of this team is their defense. Absolutely, um, the scariest and, and, part. And, and so teams need to realize, the Jets need to realize, the Giants need to realize, everyone needs to realize that it's time to make a decision. Do you want to win now and and finish one in sixteen, uh, one in fifteen, um, or three in fourteen, or three in third, whatever it is. Or do you want to build? And I think that's the moment and that's the decision that needs to be made today for a lot of these organizations. So, Dan, as we now shift back, I want to close talking about player props tonight. Because, again, we are talking about a 31-17 win for this Buccaneers team over a Giants team that's depleted with injuries, with, 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 with a quarterback on the field that kind of is playing for his job. So, Dan, give me a player prop today uh, for tonight's game, 8-15. Buccaneers at Giants. Well, Matt, unfortunately, my player props are going to go completely against the Giants because I don't know who can score for the Giants or who really has the capability to do it. So I'm going to stick with the Bucs and all the weapons that they have. I think an interesting one tonight, though, is Ronald Jones, obviously the running back, who only ran for 36 yards last week. Leonard Fournette had a big week, but I'm telling you, Ronald Jones will get the ball a lot tonight. He is a solid running back one, and you'll see that he's at plus 110, so there's some value there. And another one I like, because Godwin is out, Scotty Miller, everyone knows they're saying it's like an Edelman, Amendola kind of 2.0 for Brady. He's got value at plus 165. And with the deficiency of the defense on the Giants, cornerbacks out, safeties out, look for Tom to really air the ball out tonight. Absolutely. And my player prop that I'm throwing your way today is Rob Gronkowski to score and Patri- uh, and the Buccaneers win. Uh, plus 200, great value there again. For the past three weeks, we've kind of seen uh, Gronk become Gronk once again. Again, people started talking about the fact that the tight end wasn't getting the ball for this organization, the fact that he does have so many weapons. And Bruce Arians kind of pointed out perfectly saying, we have a lot of weapons. Everyone is going to get the ball. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the greatest strengths of this team is the fact that he doesn't have to go to uh, to Gronk every single time like he did in New, New England. England. Yeah. He doesn't have to go to Edelman every single time on third and, and four like he did in New England. All of a sudden, now he has so many weapons that, yeah, Gronk might not get the ball the same amount of times that he did in New England, but Gronk's going to still be oh, as see. as dominant when he does go for a ball or when he does go for a play, and that's what we have to look at. So today, Gronkowski plus 200 to score and win. I like that. I like that. Um, and one more time, again, the, the pickball projection is 31-17, a big win for this Buccaneers organization. So the pick's in plays, Dan. Um, let's talk about it. We're taking the Buccaneers minus 12 and a half, which means we're staying away from the Giants completely. So yeah, Buccaneers absolutely. minus 12 and a half. We're going over 45 and yep. a half. And money line as well. I do think there's value there. Again, stay away from the money line because it is 670. It is a lot. But there is value there completely. I know we've touched on it. There is value there because this team will not lose this game. This team needs to win today because they do have the Saints right on their tail in the NFC South. And you have to win these games that you're supposed to win. Um, So, again, you're going with a quarterback in Tom Brady that's the greatest of all time. 
the greatest team he's ever been on, and you're going against one of the worst. So again, today you have to go Bucks minus twelve. Absolutely, yeah. I'm all about it. And Matt, something interesting for the under over there at 45, obviously 31 17 does hit our over. And the last five meetings between these two teams, and think about it, this is between a Bucks and Giants team, a Bucks team that didn't have Brady, that didn't have Mike Evans, that didn't have all these weapons. And they're 5-0 in the last five meetings with the over. So I think the over is an actual massive play today. Like we said, I know the Giants aren't great offensively, but something based off our computer simulation, people are putting some respect on this Giants name, putting up 17 points tonight. So if the Giants can find a way to put up points, I think the over is an absolute lock. Absolutely. So again, this has been the Pick Vault. And all these plays and all these picks and all these score projections are brought to you by... The Pick Vault's AI, Artificial Intelligence Backed Computer Simulator. And again, the application will be launched in the coming days. We have a big announcement coming up later this week. So get ready. We'll, we'll keep you guys tuned in with that. But the application will be coming out in the next few days. We're still in the final stages of beta testing. Dan and I have the app on our phone today. And the the, the change it's made to our sports gambling uh, life and our predictive sports media life is tremendous and it's something that really is going to change the industry so get ready for that to come out and again one more time get ready to unlock your money tonight big win coming from tom brady big day from the greatest quarterback of all time on the field tonight against you know the the the, the team that has held him back in his career uh in those super bowls but a team that again he has a lot of history against and a team that right now might be at one of their all-time lows uh for that organization so i believe we are o u t out You've been listening to The Pick Vault, America's premier sports gambling consultation firm. Matt Taylor and Danny Siv are ready to make you a winner and unlock your money. Make sure to hit the website at www.thepickvault.com. Find the app and subscribe to receive exclusive member content, including our picks, live updates, and sports news. Follow on Twitter and Instagram at The Pick Vault, taking sports gambling to the next level. Till next time, this is The Pick Vault. Signing off. This the big vault. Gonna sit you down and listen to this real talk. Ain't no first or second option. This the default. Turning picks into these dollars. Gonna let them fall. Raining down these daily winnings like an aerosol. Analytics calculated just to win it all. Problems when it comes to choosing, we got all them solved. Got the picks that need and fixed, and you know who to call. Cause this the, cause this the, cause this the pick vault.